Good morning. Welcome to the morning prayer meeting. If you have the Bible, look at uh, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, from verse 5 to 13. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. When Jesus had entered the Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asked for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under um, uh, under camp and uh, so under authority with a soldier, soldier uh, under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. That one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was uh, astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and west and will take their place at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subject of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go. It will be done just as you believe it would. And his servant was healed at the very hour. This morning I would like to share with you about the faith. Do you have the faith like this man centurion? Centurion means he is a charge of 100 soldiers. He is a Roman Italian guy. He lives in near the Capernaum. But he is a servant. One of his soldiers is a sick, paralyzed, terrible, terrible suffering. If you look at verse 7, Jesus said to the centurion, I will go and heal him. Can you see that? He said, I will go and heal him. If Jesus offer for healing, yeah, how do you feel? Yeah? It's very good. It's an honor. Can you imagine Creator, Almighty God, offer, I can call there and then heal him. It's wonderful, fantastic news. Yeah? But this man, centurion, replied, Lord, he said, Lord, this man, he recognized that Jesus is the Creator. He is the Messiah. He is um, Adonai. And he said, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my loop, but say the word. Can you say after me? But say the word. This is amazing. He said to Jesus, Jesus, I recognize you. Just say the word. Whatever you say something, it won't happen. Therefore, just say the word. You don't need to come with me. Just say the word now. Can you do it for me? Amazing. And he explained about the, the power of a word. He recognized that the word of Jesus is the most powerful word. He recognized that the word of Jesus has got all power and authority. He talked about authority. He said, I'm a soldier. When I say to one of my you know, soldiers, go, and he, he goes. When I say to them, stop, they stopped. He knows about authority. He said to Jesus, just say the word and my servant will be healed. Can you imagine? Jesus offered him, let me go with you and heal him. It's amazing. But he said, no, you don't need to come with me. Just say the word. Do you have this kind of faith? He's a Gentile. He's not Jew. But he encouraged Jesus, Jesus, just say the word. And my servant will be healed. 
Isn't that wonderful? Live by faith, not by sight. What does it mean? Sight means you need to see. Sight means you need to see the actual things happening. But this man said to Jesus, by faith, say the words, please. And I believe that my servant will be healed. Do you know? And he explained, I am myself a man under authority. What does him under authority? Because of a, you know, soldier, every proper soldier die because of the order. Do you understand? Soldier get the order from general, from high ranking officer, just to submit. <coughs> if you don't submit, yeah, they are not proper soldier. Yeah. And he say, I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. Therefore, just say the word. Jesus was very encouraged. Do you know what Jesus said? He spoke to his following people, which is like the uh, disciples. Jesus challenged the disciples. Do you know what he said? I tell you the truth. I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. In Israel means you, my disciples. I don't see you have this kind of faith. Can you imagine? On that day, Jesus, he was very encouraged. One guy, centurion guy, gentleman, uh, gentile man, Italian man, say to Jesus, Jesus, just say the word, and my servant will be healed. Isn't that wonderful? And Jesus was very encouraged, because somebody recognized that word of Jesus changed the world. When God said, let there be light, there was light. And then Jesus said, I have not found anyone in Israel with uh, such a great faith. Have a great faith today in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a faith in God, please. And then Jesus said, do you know what Jesus said? Verse 13, Jesus said to a centurion, go, it will be done. Just as you believe it, would uh, and then servant was healed at the very hour. At the very hour means, you know, you have faith. And you just ask me, say the word, okay, your servant will be healed. Can you imagine Jesus say something yeah, in front of Centurion? But the word is working in another place. Can you imagine? Omnipresence. He, his word go everywhere. When I say something in London, and my mother is in 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 South Korea, you know how, how many kilometers from London to South Korea? Do you remember? Eight thousand eight hundred kilometers. Can you imagine? I say something in here now, Mom, be here. Something helpfully in Korea. My mom healed. Can you imagine? This is the faith. The word of God spoken from my mouth in here by faith. Mom be healed. Not only my mom. I was praying for our branch pastors and churches in Africa, India, in, in, in Amazon, in Brazil. And something happening when I say something. This is the wonderful, wonderful faith. Say the word. Do you understand? He asked you, Jesus, Jesus, just say the word. I believe that my servant will be healed. And Jesus said to him, <coughs> Go, <coughs> it will be done as you believe. You have faith, such a great faith. Heal your servant. Can you look at the Luke chapter 5, verse 4 and 5? Luke chapter 5. <coughs> Luke chapter 5, verse 4 and 5 say, When he had finished speaking, Jesus finished the message from the, you know, Peter's spot. Luke chapter 5, verse 4, He said to Simon Peter, Put, our, uh, put, out, uh, put out into deep water and let down the net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we will work hard all night. Haven't caught anything but 
Because you say so, I will let down the net. Do you understand? This man, he say to Jesus, because you say so. Can you say after me? Because you say so. That he, you know, he is a professional fisherman. He know where is the fish. There's no fish in deep water. But Jesus said to him, through your nap in deep water, you'll catch fish. But the word of Jesus is uh, against the you know, knowledge of Peter, against the emotion of Peter, against the, his will. But Peter, he surrendered everything. His knowledge, his emotion, and his will. He said, because you say so, I will let down the net. When he, they had done so, they caught uh, such a large number of fish. Can you imagine? Because you say so. I just obey. Even I don't understand what just you say. But I obey your word. But this man century, he knows the word of Jesus. is able to heal his servant. The word of Jesus is able to change any circumstance. Just one word. He said to Jesus, just say the word. <laughs> Can you imagine? Jesus, I never seen it in Israel uh, with a, such a great faith. You say to me, just say the word. Well done. Your faith, your faith, heal your servant. Can you look at the Mark chapter 4, verse 38 to 41? Book of Mark, chapter 4. <coughs> Verse 38 Jesus was in stone and sleeping on a cushion. Then the disciples woke up him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if you uh, if we drown? He get up and rebuked the wind and said to waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down. It was completely calm. Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and then asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Can you see that? Jesus slept inside of the boat on the cushion. But disciples are terrified because big storm come, wind come. They are terrified. They are scary. They ask Jesus, Jesus, wake up, help us, help us. And Jesus woke up and he said to wind, he said to the wave, be still, quiet. And disciples surprise. Wind and wave submit to Jesus. And they say to each other, who is this? The wind and the wave obey him. Do you know what Jesus challenged? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? <coughs> Don't you know that I'm, I'm here? I'm in the same boat. I'm creator. I'm almighty God. I'm the son of the living God. I'm the one to give the life. I'm the one came to this world to save the world. You don't know that? <coughs> I stayed together in the same boat. Why are you terrified? That kind of a message. Do you understand? If Jesus be with you, don't be afraid. Creator, Almighty God, is awesome God, is dwell inside of you. He is greater than this universe. Yeah? If God be with you, whom shall you against you? He is with you. <clears throat> Therefore, they are challenged by Jesus. You don't have faith. Don't you know that? You are in the same boat. Same boat. Yeah? That is why I am the one to create everything. I am the one to create the water and wave, you know, wind. I am the one to made heaven and earth. Everything is to, to me. Therefore, don't worry. Don't be afraid, what Jesus said to them. 
This is a faith. Jesus challenged his disciples. Where is your faith? You don't have faith. No faith. Have a great faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have a great faith. Live by faith, not by sight. You know, faith. If you have faith, like a mustard seed, yeah, you can move the mountain. You can move the mountain. Jesus wants to increase your faith. Faith from hearing, hearing by the word of God. This morning you listen to the word of God now. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was a great encouraged by one Gentile man, Centurion. The Bible didn't mention his name, but he has got such a great faith. And look at Matthew chapter 14, Matthew 14, 28 to 31. <coughs> Matthew 14, Matthew 14, 28 to 31. Matthew 14, 28. Lord, if, you, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Can you imagine? Disciples or any human being never seen anybody walking on the water. But Peter said to Jesus, If it's you, can you call me and say to me, Come? And Jesus said, Come. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and come toward Jesus. You never know, see? Somebody walking on the water. Jesus walking on the water. We know that. Because Jesus. The living God. But Peter, human being, walking on the water like Jesus. And but, look at verse 30. But when he saw the wind, and he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. This is the main problem. When Peter received the word, which is the come, he should keep the word. In other words, he should work on the word. Look like Peter walking on the water, but no, Peter walking on the word of God. Can you say Amen? amen. When you walk on the word of God, you can see that this kind of miracles. But unfortunately, in the beginning, Peter walking on the word of God. Yeah, yeah. But what he saw, he saw the wind, he saw the deep water, and what happened? Sank. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith. He said, why did you doubt? You see, I already gave you my word, which is come. Where is my word? I told you to come. You need to keep my word. You forget. You lose my word. That is why you saw the water and you sank. Jesus said, you of little faith. Why? Did you doubt? This is the main problem. Most of people live by sight, live by circumstance. If you look at your circumstance, if you focus on your problem, if you focus on somebody or focus on any material thing, you never ever live by faith. That is why. Jesus say, I give you a word which is come. Then Julian say to Jesus, just say the word. Can you imagine? Different. Peter, forget the word of Jesus. And then this centurion may come to Jesus, just say the word. Of course, on the other occasion, Peter say to Jesus, because you say so, I just obey. When you obey, he saw the miracle. Therefore, disciples learn something from Jesus. Whatever Jesus says something, it's going to happen. Yeah? Therefore, they should obey what Jesus said. <coughs> Can you look at uh, John chapter 15, verse 7? There's a secret key. John chapter 15, verse 7, about the word. John 15, verse 7. Yeah, you know, good to have the Bible in your hand. I know you can use your mobile phone Bible, but good to have the Bible in the 
in the house of the law. Yes, you have the plenty Bible. Yeah. John chapter 15 verse 7 says, Look, if you remain in me, what Jesus, if you remain in me, yeah, my word remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Did what Jesus say? You remain in me. My word remain in you. You ask anything. Do you understand? Therefore, you have the word of God in you and you can pray with the word of God. It's very important. Pray to God with his promised word. Pray to God with the scripture. It's so powerful. Yeah? When you pray to God with the word of God, it's the most powerful prayer. Because God promised with us for example, Matthew 6.33. Anybody knows Matthew 6.33? Seeking for his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be done to you. And you can say to God like this. Dear Father, I trust in you. I seek him for your kingdom and your righteousness. And then you look after my life. All these things shall be done to me. All these things means spiritual need, physical need, financial need. Mentally, emotionally, materially, any kind of need, all these things means. Yeah? But my job, put God first. My job, seeking for His kingdom and His righteousness. And this is His promise. Can I encourage you? I am working for Jesus. Yeah? For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And I am working for Jesus. God is working for me. Do you know that? He look at look after me. Do you understand? Therefore, Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-five to thirty-four. Do you know what Jesus said? Don't worry about your life. Don't think about what should I eat, what should I wear, what should I drink. All these things, pagans look after all these things. You are my child. God knows that what you need. But your job is seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be done to you. Therefore, Jesus said, if you remain in me, my word remain in you, ask whatever you wish and you will receive it. And then when you bear the much fruit, when you receive it, mean, do you know what Jesus said? You bear much fruit. When you bear the much fruit, what Jesus said, this is my father's glory. And then you are my disciples. Do you understand? Show me your fruit. I don't know who you are. But one thing I do know, if you show me the good fruit, I know what kind of faith you have. Have a faith in God. How can you have a faith? Have the word of God in you. If my word remain in you, you are in, remain in me. Ask whatever you wish. I'll give on to you. Yeah? This very important scripture this morning about the faith. Like this man centurion. He said to Jesus, Jesus, say the word. <coughs> Finally, look at the John chapter six, verse sixty seven. John chapter six, verse sixty seven saying Do you not want to live too? Do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. Do you know what Jesus said to disciples? Most of people, they leave. Why? Because they don't have any more food. They, you know, many, many people, you know, Desert from Jesus. And Jesus said, Do you want to live from me also? And they say, You have the word of eternal life. Can you see that? Yeah. What does it mean you have the word of eternal life? Yeah. Do you know heaven and earth will pass away? The word of God never pass away. This is you know, Jesus, you have the word of eternal life. When Jesus says something, is a is an eternal word, everlasting word. Yeah, do you understand? 
Anybody thirsty, come to me. Drink the living water. The word of Jesus is a living water. The word of Jesus is, a, is a more sharper than double-edged sword. The word of Jesus changed the life. Do you know how I become born again Christian? Through the word of God. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. The scripture changed my life. You, Jago, I formed you. You, Israel, I created you. You are mine. When you walk through the fire, fire not burn to you. When you walk through the water, water not swap over you. I am the God of Israel. You are mine. When I read the scripture, that scripture is not just a written word. The word is like a lemma. It's a spoken word. God spoke to me very clearly. He changed my life by the word of God. Therefore, if you have the word of God, yeah, you have everything. Be honest with you, I can survive any country in the world with one book, this Bible. Amazing power, power in this book. Amazing creation in this book. You can get any kind of you know, provision by this book, which is the word of God. My people are perished because of lack of knowledge. And another way, you can be prosper by word of God, you know. Paul, Apostle Paul, he went to the Philippi. He went to Europe. Because he saw the visions. My Sardinian guy called him to come and come. Whole Europe changed by one man. Why? Because Paul, he went to Europe with the word of God to change the Europe. <clears throat> I came to UK. For what? To change UK. Not me. <laughs> I'm just one little man. But I can change the Europe whole world by one book, which is the Bible. Bible, full of creation power in this book. When God say, let there be light, God made the light. There was light. When this word come out, if you look at the Isaiah 55, verse 11. Isaiah 55, 11 say, so it's my word that comes out from my mouth, and it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I send it. You see? Centurion guy said to Jesus, Jesus, just say the word. My servant will be healed. Jesus said, In Israel, I never seen like this kind of man with a, such a great faith. If Jesus stand in here and say to you, I never seen in my life you have a, such a great faith. To change UK, change Europe, you can see the great spiritual awakening in the United Kingdom. How many believe that you can see the spiritual awakening in UK? Do you believe that? I believe that God can do something. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Jesus met a centurion guy, and he came to Jesus. My servant is uh, terribly suffering because of a paralyzed and sickness. Jesus offered him, I can go and heal him. But he said to Jesus, you don't need to come with me. Just say the word. I am living under the authority. I believe that Jesus, you have the power and authority in your word. Just say the word. Jesus said, I never seen anybody in Israel with such great faith. And Jesus said to him, According to your faith, your servant will be healed. In the same hour, in different distance, different place, but his servant received healing instantly. Father, give us your faith, like this centurion man. Live by faith, live by word, not by sight, not by circumstance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Keep on praying for mission to America from 24th to 26th of October. We'll go to New York, New Jersey, and Zombie Street, and Philadelphia. We call the um, uh, Kensington Avenue in that area. 75,000 people, they have, you know, addiction problem, drug addiction. 
and pentadil. Penta, pentadil is a very strong kind of drugs. Anyway, keep on praying for us, protect God, protect uh, our journey. Thank you. God bless you.